Let me read to you a passage from the 8th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 23 to 27. It's the Gospel for Tuesday of the 13th week in Ordinary Time. St. Matthew writes, Then Jesus got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. That's from Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. What does it suggest to us? Well, there would seem to be no end to the theories of religion, and many of them are very good. One theory understands religion as man's response to the threat of evil. The character and structure of a particular religion is studied in terms of its response to evil and to suffering. It could be Buddhism, remembering Buddha's search for the path of happiness. It could be this or that indigenous religion with its evocation of the beginnings of creation through ritual and myth, and thus ensuring ongoing life in the face of the vulnerability and transience of all that is around. There is no doubting that the experience of evil and threat prompts much of religion. It is also clear that it was a factor that prompted God, let us say, to reveal himself to man. God so loved the world that he sent his only son to save the world from its sin. And for his part, sinful and vulnerable man appeals to God for pardon and help. However, it is also evident from the entire history of man and his religions that God's entry into the scene and man's appeal to him does not take away the evil and suffering that is rampant in creation, even though it indisputably reduces it. As a result of Christ's coming, there has been an unending and powerful impulse to assist the needy wherever they might be, but evil and suffering are not taken away from the world in absolute terms. And well, my understanding is that some currents of Judaism take this fact as discounting Jesus as being the Messiah. Well, the Christian answer answers that evil and suffering are not taken away from the world now, but it will be when Christ comes in glory. Till then, the Christian in union with Jesus resists evil and bears suffering, just as Christ did. However, what man does have in the midst of suffering and evil is the abiding presence of the one in whom he can entirely trust, whether or not his suffering is taken away now or in the future. Even as he thinks he is going down, he has Christ by his side. Our Gospel today gives us a picture of man and his religion, a kind of a picture of it. He is being swamped by a menacing world, and his only recourse is desperately to shake God himself, as it were, to come to his aid. The disciples are in the boat, and it is being swamped. But Jesus is doing nothing. Indeed, he's asleep. How like much of life. Where is God with all, the, all this that is going on? Where was he during the Holocaust? Or during the 9-11 attack? Or during the great tsunami that destroyed so many thousands early in our century? It looks as if there is no God, but no. In the storm, Christ was there, in his humanity, asleep. But ultimately, all was well. And as a sign of this, at their appeal, he awoke and at a word calmed the sea. But what was his message? It was that they should not have failed in faith. That is the one thing necessary. We're going to drown, he replied, you of little faith. Why are you so afraid? 
it may well be that as a result of our prayers, the evil that threatens is averted. Indeed, Christ directs us to expect this, and time and again, what is portrayed in the gospel scene is replicated in the history of man. God comes to our aid as a result of our prayers. He guides the surgeon's hand, and the sick person is well again. The bush fire is averted because of prayer. The rains come because of prayer. The exam is passed because of prayer. But at times, not so. The prayer is answered in other ways, while the specific evil that, it, that threatened eventuates. What is Christ's message for all such circumstances? It is that we not fail in our faith. It is not God's plan to rid the world of all suffering and evil immediately, though he will do when Christ comes in glory. But the example and path of Christ himself shows that evil, suffering and death remain in our world for the time being. And it is within this that our redemption and our sanctification is achieved. Christ freely went to his death after having asked his Father to take it away. But it was not his Father's will. Christ tells us to have faith whatever may happen. In every circumstance of life, let us remember our gospel scene today that I read earlier, and above all, the words of Christ to his disciples before he actually calmed the storm. As reversals occur, as life passes and the night approaches, as we rise in life and then gradually fail, all will be well if we remain close to Christ and have faith in him. As the rains come and the floods rise, the house will be built on the, the house that is built on rock will stand. The rock will not fail. Christ is that rock. Christ will take us to life everlasting.